so we're a month now, almost to the day, since Annie underwent uh, an operation here in London to remove the large uh, hemangioma uh, that had grown since birth. It was big. It was a, a bright red, shiny, golf ball-sized tumour. I'm a doctor. I knew what this was. I knew that it was uh, benign, that it would probably continue to grow till she was about 18 months, get considerably bigger than this. I knew that we had three basic options ahead of us. We had a medical option, which involved giving a, a drug for many months or years that helped shrink the tumour. There was do nothing and allow this thing to grow and then send her into childhood with this thing on her forehead. Or there was surgery to remove the tumour. Now, the medical option uh, we decided from the outset was not a runner. Really, it, was, it came down to to operate or not to operate. And given that this is one of the most common childhood tumours, I was expecting to find a wealth of, of data, of clinical data, with which I would inform my decision. And I was amazed to find, really, that there was nothing. I was expecting to learn of the, uh, the short-term and, and long-term clinical outcomes of surgery, how the size and type of the hemangioma would influence uh, the surgery that would be uh, required. I was interested to know if there was any literature at all on the psychosocial effects of uh, growing up with a tumour as large as this. We had no data to, to inform us. We had nothing to guide us uh, but for a sort of hunch and a gut feeling. I worried uh, about surgery. Uh, I think, as you can see, really the, the, the bleeding risk. On the other hand, I worried about uh, letting this thing grow. I couldn't imagine myself letting go of her little hand uh, at the school gates on her first day at nursery school, off to face uh, the, the cruel comments and, and, and gazes uh, that we'd got to know, uh, and still brings tears to my eyes now. And in fact, it was Annie who made our mind up for us. And at, so at eight months old, she changed. Her personality completely changed. And she went from an overtly happy, bonny, smiley, laughy little baby, she was a delight, uh, to a sad quiet baby. She stopped smiling. People had stopped smiling at her. And so they would gather at the foot of her buggy. Uh, they would stare stony-faced down at her. She would be smiling back at them with a broad grin, looking from face to face. And there was nothing coming. There was no, there was no reciprocal smile. People weren't looking at her face. They were looking at the tumour. We made our mind up. We went to see Prof Hutchison in London. Uh, we decided really we wanted surgery. Within two weeks, we'd had the operation. She's transformed. We have our, our happy, bonny little Annie back. She's got a little scar. My wish is that in future parents uh, facing these decisions are not uh, faced with uh, this uh, information vacuum. That they can base their decision on the back of, of good quality clinical data born out of uh, quality clinical research. This is absolutely brilliant, creating the world's first ever research centre dedicated to this most socially sensitive part of our body, which will collect major data and organize research to improve patient treatment worldwide. Well done, Saving Faces.